Here we have a confidence interval question. Let's highlight the information we have. We're interested in the mean duration of an unemployment spell of um, unemployed women in a particular city. We measure that in terms of months. It is known that the unemployment duration of women is normally distributed with variance 129.6. So it's a bit of important information we know. Let's call that variable x. I could call it whatever you want. And the information tells us we know this is normally distributed and it has a variance of 129.6. Now what we don't know is what the population mean is and that's what we are interested in. A random sample of 20 unemployed women, so we have a sample size of 20, yields an average unemployment duration of 14.7, so x bar is 14.7. Obtain a 98% confidence interval for the population mean unemployment, so for this guy, uh, for women. So what we need to do is here we need to calculate a confidence interval. We know confidence intervals are calculated like this. Our sample mean plus minus and then there are two things. There is a value which comes from a distribution. So that comes from a distribution times the standard error of our sample estimate that x bar, the standard error of x bar. Now where that distribution value comes from, that now depends on how x bar is distributed. Now in our case, we know that x, the population, is normally distributed and we know the variance. That means that this value, that x bar, is actually also normally distributed. And that means this value comes from the standard normal distribution, which we usually label with a set. Now, which value from the distribution do we need? Well, that depends on what sort of confidence interval we calculate. We want a 98% confidence interval. So that means that alpha is equal to 2%. And it's always the alpha divided by 2 value. So it's the value in the normal distribution that cuts off 1% of the distribution on either side. Okay, and so let's actually start uh, getting to this. We can go to a standard normal table. So you could, for instance, search the values we have given here is the cumulative distributions in the standard normal table. So we could look for a value of 1%. Here we get closest. That is at negative 2.33. And if we check plus 2.33, 2.33, we see that the probability of getting smaller, a value smaller than that in a standard normal is 99%. So to the right of that is also 1%. So the values here are negative 2.33 and plus. 2.33. So we only take the positive value because we are calculating plus minus anyway. So in our case, we know that this value is 2.33. So let's write that down already. We already know the sample mean that is 14.7 plus minus. So what about the standard error of x bar? Well, the standard error of x bar, and you need to that we're using knowledge about sampling distribution is if this is the population variance then it's the square root of the population variance divided by n. As we have the population variance we use that. On other occasions you may have to use a sample uh, variance but that will then have an impact on that distribution. So in our case it's the square root of 1296 one to nine point six divided by the sample size which is 20. So this is all the hard work done. This is 14.7 plus minus 2.33 times if we calculate that we
we get 2.5456 and that leads to a confidence interval of 8.7688 20 right, so if you think about a line our sample average was 14.7 and what we calculated is a confidence interval here right? so this is our 98 percent confidence interval if we reduced let's do that if we reduced alpha if we had smaller alpha then our confidence interval would become larger if we increased sorry if we reduced alpha yes that means we would increase our confidence we would get a wider confidence interval if we increased alpha meaning we reduced the confidence we would get narrow confidence intervals so how do we interpret this confidence interval well as we calculated a 98 percent confidence with an alpha of two percent you could think about if we took 100 samples and calculated then 100 confidence intervals in the same manner as we've just done we would expect that 98 of them would actually contain the true population mean 